Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to talk to you about vitamin E and which are the best forms to use to help protect your formulas. Now first of all, there are multiple types of vitamin E. So I want to help you navigate through the different types of vitamin E because there are some that are better at protecting formulas and some that are better when used on the skin. First of all, what is natural and what is synthetic? The D-alpha tocopheryl form is the natural form. The D-L-alpha tocopheryl form is synthetic. And you'll also find tocopheryl acetate as well. Now I want to mention at this point that the acetate form is no good to protect your formula. It won't provide any antioxidant protection of your formula but it will provide antioxidant protection on the skin. D-alpha tocopheryl works best on the skin, even better than D-L-alpha tocopheryl, the synthetic form, on the skin. But the acetate form won't provide any protection for your product. Now in this video, I'm gonna be focusing more on the antioxidant protection of your formula rather than the benefits on the skin. There is loads of research out there, not only about vitamin E, but about a number of other extracts that provide antioxidant protective effects on the skin. And I'd invite you to conduct some of that research to make some unique selections for your formulas as a point of difference. But today's conversation is about protecting your formula. On that note, I do wanna point out that vitamin E is an antioxidant. It does not provide any antimicrobial or preservative benefits for your formula. In fact, it actually acts as a food source in your formula. So if your formula contains water, you'll need to use appropriate preservatives to protect against microbial contamination because vitamin E is not going to provide you any of those benefits. So now, there is alpha, beta, gamma, and delta types of tocopherols. And these can be commonly referred to in a mixture as mixed tocopherols. Mixed tocopherols will provide your formula with the best antioxidant protection, better than D-alpha tocopherol on its own, for example. And you'll typically find your mixed tocopherols come as a 50 or 70% concentrate with a carrier oil to help make it miscible in your formula. For example, this is a 70% mixed tocopheryl material uh, and having that solvent means that I can mix it into a formula relatively easily. Now at this point, you're probably gonna ask me about IU, international units. IU is a measure of biological activity. So if you're comparing vitamin E's based on their IU, you would be looking more at the antioxidant activity for the skin. We don't typically use IU as a measure of its antioxidant protective function for a formula. Now I've just said that mixed tocopherols are the better form of vitamin E to help protect your formula. It's interesting there have also been some studies conducted to show that when you use mixed tocopherols with a scorbyl palmitate and some phytic acid, you'll get potentially the best antioxidant protection in your formula. But mixed tocopherols can provide antioxidant protection on your formula from as little as 0.1%. Now when you're using vitamin E to protect your formula or as an antioxidant for the skin, more does not necessarily mean it's better. In fact, above 2% can sometimes cause consumer irritations. This is believed to be uh, somewhat induced by the oxidative protective qualities of the vitamin E, but in any case, stay below 2% to avoid any possible interaction. Now there's a lot of information about the potential oxidative enhancement of too much vitamin E in your formula as well. So I conducted some trials to test it out and show you the results of different inputs of vitamin E in formulas and the impact it has. 
I used the same base formula for all samples. It was a very simple formula. I used 15% of evening primrose oil because it is a readily oxidizable oil. In this first row, these are the real time temperature conditions with 0.1% mixed tocopherols, 0.5%, 1% and 2%. Under real time conditions, we can see that there is some color changes to the 2% varium. This is the 40 degrees stored samples. Again, 0.1% mixed tocopherols, 0.5%, 1% and 2%. And again, at 55 degrees, and I should emphasize that changes that occur at 55 degrees storage conditions may never happen under real time conditions. Again, at 0.1% mixed tocopherols, 0.5, 1% and 2%. These all contained exactly the same base formula, all contained 15% evening primrose oil as my readily oxidizable oil. What you can see is the 2% variants have shown some coloration changes, while the 0.1, 0.5 and 1% variants all showed relatively good stability. At 55 degrees, there is some coloration changes to all samples, but again, what happens at 55 degrees may never happen under real-time storage conditions. I get asked a lot, how much vitamin E should I use? First of all, you need to use the right form. A mixed tocopherols at 50% doesn't work as effectively per percentage import as a 70% mixed tocopherol material, for example. So you need to look at the concentration and the type of vitamin E that you're actually using. An acetate form will never provide you any formulation benefits. It provides skin benefits, not formulation benefits. So if you're looking for protective qualities for your formula, use the mixed tocopherol form because that will provide you with the best protection. Now the amount to use is another question I get asked a lot and it's really hard to say. In this particular experiment, I used 15% of a readily oxidizable oil and I found that the protection from 0.1% was pretty much just as effective as at 1%. But you could have an input of 0.5% depending on your price point or you could have 0.5% so that it provides some formulation protection as well as on skin protection and a part of your marketing claims. So how do you know the right input for your formula? Well, you need to conduct stability testing pretty much like you saw me do with these samples. Storing your products at extreme temperature conditions as well as under UV or extreme light conditions will help you see if your product is going to change color or odor over time. Now, when you're storing at 35 or 40 degrees, you can take those samples as accelerated conditions and expect probably similar results over real time, but double the time frame. However, if you're storing at 55 degrees, as I've mentioned, the results may never happen under real time conditions, but it can give you some indication in a relatively short time frame if there is likely to be some oxidative changes, although they may never happen under real time conditions. For more information about stability testing, please watch our stability video. It really depends on your formula as to the exact input you're going to need. You're generally going to want between 0.1 to 1% in your standard emulsion formulations. When you have a hot fill product, you will typically use more mixed tocopherols during the hot fill process because antioxidants should be added below 40 degrees so that you don't start the oxidative process already. Antioxidants are there to protect your formula when it's exposed to either extreme conditions or over time. So if you add your antioxidant into the hot phase, you will start to use some of its oxidative protective benefits while you're even packing off the product. Now in a hot fill product like a balm, this is largely unavoidable. So you generally need to use more of the antioxidant during the filling step 
so that after filling there is still enough antioxidant present to provide long-term shelf life protective effects. And again, that magic number of how much to use really depends on your formula, how many oxidative materials you have in that formula. For example, if you're using mineral oils or materials that don't oxidize, you don't need an antioxidant to protect the formula. But if you're using a lot of plant oils and essential oils, you'll need to provide some antioxidant protection to your formula. And that is where your mixed tocopherols can help. But make sure you conduct stability testing because there is no one set percentage input that will guarantee your formula under various conditions of storage or ingredient inputs. So run a test similar to what you saw me conduct to monitor for any color or odor changes to make sure that your formula is protected long-term from oxidation. And remember, you'll need preservatives if water is present because antioxidants do not provide any sort of microbial protection. They're usually adding to the food source. I hope you found this information useful to guide your selection process when you're next picking your vitamin E to get the desired benefits in your end formulation. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments below, and remember to subscribe to get notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.